Hello and welcome to News Click. The Finance Minister Piyush Goyal has just presented the Union Budget for the year 2019-20. Now this budget comes at a very important time for this government. On the one hand, the agrarian crisis has seen hundreds and thousands of farmers take to the streets in protest. Unemployment is at record high levels. And most importantly, in just over two months, the general election that will determine the future of Narendra Modi is going to be held. And the government is very clearly conscious of this in this budget. To talk more about this, we have with us senior journalist Paranjay Guhatakul. Hello, Paranjay. Hello, Prashant. Before you ask me the first question, right. you described Mr. Piyush Goyal as the finance minister. Maybe you should be describing him as an acting finance acting minister finance or an minister. interim finance Fair minister. Enough. You describe this as a budget for 2019-20. You should ideally describe right. it as, as an, an interim, interim budget, budget. Right, at right. best. Or perhaps a vote on account. Though, of course, right. this government is making every effort to pretend that this is a full-fledged budget. Right. So, to start with the most topical issue of, un of employment. So, the last couple of days have seen the controversy over the NSSO, the leaked NSSO report. And today, Piyush Goyal's speech was full of references to employment in the strangest of places. So, do you see this interim budget as actually having done anything about the issue of employment at all? Well, this budget claims it's going to do something for small farmers, for the lower middle classes. It claims it's doing quite a bit for the underprivileged sections of the country. But what the, I mean, the government's silence is deafening when it comes to specific, even what should I say, token measures for those who are unemployed. As you rightly pointed out, the leaked report of the National Sample Survey Organization, which was uh, leaked to Business Standard newspaper, it's essentially what they call a periodic labor force survey. It indicates that in 2017 18, Unemployment in India was its highest in the last 45 years in at 6.1%. And what is more and is of particular consternation is that the joblessness among rural youth in the age group 15 to 29 has more than trebled from 5% to 17.4% in the period between 2011-12 and 2017-18. You're right. What Mr. Piyush Goyal kept saying was that, you know, if the economy is growing, if the economy is doing so well, how can you say no jobs are not being created? Even highways can create jobs as well. And if you recall, is. when uh, the Niti Aayog, uh, Chief Executive Officer Amitabh Kant, was asked, Ki, how do you reconcile uh, the, the fact that, you know, the report shows higher unemployment and you're saying the economy is growing very well. And, and he actually sought, used the examples of Ola and Uber to indicate that actually jobs are growing. And he was actually seeking to refute the statistics put out by the Labor Bureau. But what the National Sample Survey Organization does is actually speak to people and ask them over the last week, how many days they have been unemployed and so on and so forth. And what is interesting is that all this has happened in the wake of the quote-unquote autonomous body called the National Statistical Commission. It's two independent members putting in their papers. And uh, what was also very, very unusual is that the head of the Niti Aayog, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, was clearly flustered when he sought to say, you know, the report that's been leaked to Business Standard is not the final report. When people say, what final report? Who's going to finalize the report? Who gets approval? First he said, no, no. Then he said, perhaps the cabinet has to approve it. The fact is, these reports are never, ever approved by the cabinet. It has never happened before. So clearly, the government is not just on the back foot, it really doesn't, in, even in terms of optics, you can argue what they've given to farmers is cosmetic at best, an insult at worst. The same thing for the lower middle classes, but they haven't even tried to do even a little bit for 
unemployed young people in the country. And it's interesting you mentioned the farmers because there was a lot of buzz about major schemes that would be targeted at the agrarian sector, especially after the recent state election results. But the final measure that came out, 6,000 rupees per month, that's just uh, 6,000 rupees per year, that's just 500 rupees per month, like you said, is extremely paltry. And there seems to be no, uh, say, sustainable projects or say anything in the long run for the sector at all. So there's no end to the crisis as far as the budget is concerned. If you break it down, what does it work out to? 500 rupees per month. Assume a farmer's household has five members. What does that work out to? 3.3 rupees per person per day. Look, the scheme announced by the government of Telangana, the, the Rayuta Bandhu, gives 4,000 per acre per crop season. The, the scheme that has been announced by the government of Orissa, which is the Kalia scheme, it is a far better scheme. And not only that, this scheme is only for small farmers, farmers with a land holding of less than two acres. No, nothing mentioned about landless farmers, nothing mentioned about farm laborers. At least the, the, the Orissa government scheme is meant for not just owners of land, right. even if they're small landholders, but also those who work on the land, including landless laborers. Yeah, right, right. And even the various insurance schemes and all that are being planned basically seem to be end up benefiting only the insurance companies rather than the farmers. That's very, very clear. I mean, that so far, the insurance schemes that have been announced have really benefited insurance companies and that too, private insurance companies. And uh, Sainat described this as a scam which is bigger than Rafael. But the, but the point is, you know, whatever you put out on paper, whatever you show, um, uh, the, the, you, you try and convince people that, look, this is all, all the things that we are doing. But actually, not only are you not doing anything, you're ending up perverting the scheme and, and, and enabling a privileged few uh, companies to gain. Right. And let's look at the other main target audience of the government. There was a lot of buzz even before uh, say the budget was presented about how the middle class would be one of the primary beneficiaries. And of course the tax rebate was announced, the FILAC tax rebate. And there's been a lot of celebration online also. But do you really think that this budget actually has delivered for the middle class per se? And if you recall, after Mr. Piyush Goel made this announcement, there was much yes, thumping were, of desks exactly, and, exactly. and 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 you could hear Modi, you could, Modi yes, you could hear right. nothing but Modi, Modi, almost as if you were in an election rally, which right. is really what this speech is all about, in 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 the in the house in the, in the lower house of parliament. Okay, let's quickly look at this scheme. It is aimed only at lower middle classes. Okay, fine. Secondly, it's a scheme that's just been announced. So nothing's going to happen until you have a new government, whatever be the color and the complexion of that new government, which will come into place, we are expecting, if it's as per schedule, towards the end of May. And then we'll have another budget being presented by the new government. And that budget will decide whether this scheme will continue or not. Next point, why is it only uh, useful for lower middle classes and who actually the maximum gain they uh, that they uh, a taxpayer could gain would be about 12,500 rupees per annum right. right so so you're really looking at less than you know I mean what should I say about less than 2,000 rupees uh, well well under 2,000 a little more than a thousand rupees per month now if your monthly assessable income is above 42,500. That is, if your annual assessable income is over 5 lakh rupees, even after you factor in the standard deduction changes that have been proposed, which will save you 500 rupees in tax, that you're not going to gain anything. So it's only meant for that section of taxpayers who are the lower middle class. And let me here point out what is a very, very obvious contradiction which persists. We are in a strange situation where you're being taxed. Who's supposed to be taxed? Personal income tax? It's because you're well-to-do. You're supposed to be rich. 
but you have a quota for government jobs and, and, and admissions to all educational institutions. Uh, if you are supposed to be, you qualify as a poor, if you have, if your uh, annual accessible income is eight lakh rupees, uh, so it's amazing that then you become under the EWS or the economically weaker section. But the income tax department has a different point of view. This is an amazing contradiction. You're being taxed because you're rich, but you'll get a quota because you're supposed to be poor. Exactly, and even the quota discussion that took place, there was a reference to the increase in seats, of course, but really no discussion on how this would be actually executed in terms of budget investments too, because this calls for a huge amount you of You know, investment. the short point is this government has guessed two hoots about tradition, norms, propriety. And, and we really, I mean, this was clear. Uh, one is tempted to quote the former chief economic advisor, uh, Mr. Nitin Desai, who described it as Pradhan Mantri Vachau Yojana that this is really uh, a, 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 an attempt, a last ditch attempt a few months before the general elections to save uh, <laughs> or to bolster the image of the Prime Minister after all his false promises have been called out uh, over the last several years. And let, let's look at the principle as to why an outgoing government is not supposed to present a full-fledged budget but an interim budget is essentially to keep the wheels of the government going till a new government is placed. So, so if your financial year ends on the last day of March, then in April, May, and you know, let it continue. What is the rationale? That the outgoing government should not and must not commit its successor government into a set of policies, a set of commitments on expenditure, and so on and so forth. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's the same set of people who become uh, the, the, the new set of rulers, but the point is the lower house of parliament, the Lok Sabha has to pass the budget. It is a prerogative of the new Lok Sabha to decide what kind of tax rates, what kind of policies, what kind of expenditures happen. So this government really gives a damn about conventions, traditions, norms, propriety. I mean, you can argue, what was this great tearing hurry to make all these announcements? The income tax, the classic case for the lower middle class. Nothing's going to happen. Right. Even if you assume that the next government passes everything that you propose now, even if you assume that, nobody's going to gain. So at the end of the day, you're seeking to tie up a successor government, irrespective of its color and complexion. In the, in the process, you give a damn about norms, about propriety, about conventions, about traditions. So it's very clear what this budget is meant for and why it has been presented, if you want to call it a budget in the first place. Also, uh, if you look at the style of the presentation itself, so much of time was dedicated to actually listing out the schemes over the past five years, it's the work that has happened. So there's actually much less focus on, say, the future or even, say, even some more detail on some of the plans, as much as it is an extended election campaign. And it's an election advertisement for the Modi exactly. government. We are the biggest, we are the best, we've done this, we've done that. So that was all, that was all this was all about. A whole lot of grandstanding. Thank you, Pranjir. Thank you, Prashant. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching NewsClick.